I'm Chris Patrick, and I'm Natural Capital Coordinator for the Greater Manchester Combined Authority. So, next 15 minutes, um, and I'll keep on track. I shall just outline um, Greater Manchester's um, approach in terms of natural capital, and I think we've heard reference on a number of occasions in terms of natural capital approach, making the invisible visible. Um, so, um, I'm going to uh, just outline some of our things, but first of all, I'd just like to um, outline um, the strategic context, really, in terms of um, the Mayor's ambition for a green city region, um, which is looking to transform Greater Manchester into a world-leading greener, cleaner city region. And ultimately, this will provide a unique opportunity for us to protect and enhance the environmental quality and resilience of our conurbation. And there are a number of exciting projects that are being delivered and have been delivered across Greater Manchester, which will help deliver this ambition, um, but also in terms of achieving uh, greater collaboration, um, but also in terms of actually looking at um, embedding and adopting natural capital approaches um, and, and using those ideas within a motivated um, and enthused city region. So I'm going to touch on three of those. Um, it's the work of the Natural Capital Group, um, the Urban Pioneer Project and Natural Course Project. So the Natural Capital Group, um, one of my key roles is supporting this group, which is the Local Nature Partnership for Greater Manchester. Um, and it acts as an ambassador for the natural environment um, in Greater Manchester and consists of representatives of the public, private and third sectors. Um, and it provides strategic advice to the combined authority on our natural environment um, and also in terms of delivery of the climate change low emission implementation plan. Um, so there are key sections in that plan that refer specifically to natural capital. So therefore it's, it's distinctly embedded in terms of um, how we're actually delivering in terms of um, our overall objectives. And the Local Nature Partnership and its partners, including the 10 local authorities, um, have been actively involved in producing a wide variety of evidence. So we've got a significant amount of evidence on our natural assets and what we've got in Greater Manchester, our ecosystem services, um, and particularly in terms of our blue and green infrastructure. And obviously that's been used to inform policy documents, um, particularly in terms of our natural environment um, sections, um, um, and particularly in terms of consultations around um, the climate change strategy, our, our, um, our uh, Greater Manchester Spatial Framework, but also in terms of our um, Greater Manchester Strategy refresh, which is um, due out shortly. And in terms of that, we've got a lot of projects and partnerships already established and lots of joint working and collaboration. Um, I'll cover the two projects, the GM Urban Pioneer and Life IP Natural Course, but we've got the Greater Manchester Wetlands, Nature Improvement Area, City of Trees ambition to plant a tree for every resident in Greater Manchester, the Greater Manchester Ecology Unit, Greater Green Project, the Resilient Infrastructure Project, catchment partnerships and, and so on and so forth. So we've got a lot of work going on in terms of um, delivery. But obviously in terms of benefits of natural capital, we know a lot through this evidence in terms of what the benefits are, the wide ranging benefits. And this particular infographic is from the DEFRA Local Action um, Project, um, which actually is just kind of providing a summary really. And I think right at the start of the opening of the conference, um, key issues in terms of green infrastructure, in terms of air quality, in terms of health and well-being, in terms of catchment based approach, they're all there really. Um, and I think really in terms of from a natural capital approach, what we're trying to do is actually understand those better in terms of a local context, but also in terms of actually how do we communicate those and embed those within policy? Because ultimately, what we need to do is recognise the true value of our natural environment and embed that within our everyday decision making. So that leads us on to the Urban Pioneer Project. And Greater Manchester is one of um, four pioneers commissioned by DEFRA, um, each based in a different environment across the country. And the objectives for all the pioneers is to find better ways of working within the current resource we have. So there aren't additional funding there to help support this. This is about how we do things with our existing resources, our existing information, but actually adopt that in terms of actually taking forward a natural capital approach. So there are four key asks, and that is around testing new tools, demonstrating integrated approach, pioneering scaling up new funding opportunities, and growing our understanding of what works, sharing lessons and best practice, and actually cascading that out to other conurbations in terms of what we've learned, what works, what, what, what doesn't work, and how can we improve that and why. And so therefore, obviously, the ultimate aim here is in terms of achieving um, a decline in our natural environment so that we can actually reverse that decline um, and actually achieve a net gain um, approach. And that's the whole objective, really, in terms of reversing that decline of our natural environment, whether that's caused through pollution, development, um, land use changes. And 
The natural capital approach for this is being used and obviously the pioneers have been asked to test these principles over a three to four year period. And DEFRA group leads um, have been identified for each of the areas. So in the northwest, we have two um, pioneer areas, one in Cumbria um, and one in Manchester, which is the urban pioneer. And then there are two in North Devon. Um, and obviously in terms of the environment agency are the lead for Manchester and Cumbria. Um, and in terms of actually identifying these areas, they have been identified to provide a different context, a different environment in terms of a, addressing these different kind of challenges we're facing. Um, and obviously there's a lot of things that are already going on um, and relevant activities. So in Greater Manchester we have um, our existing partnerships and I'll come on to the Natural Cause project in a minute. So in terms of, if you're not familiar with Greater Manchester, um, it's got a, a wide variety of wildlife and landscape habitats um, ranging from wetlands, mosslands, river valleys, urban parks and suburban gardens. And this diverse landscape provides a wealth of services to the citizens of Greater Manchester. And therefore, in terms of actually putting together the vision for the Urban Pioneer Project, um, we've had a period of wide and diverse engagement, covering many sectors and organisations, trying to identify the challenging issues within Greater Manchester and how the natural environment can help alleviate or improve those issues. So the feedback from the engagement was that the Urban Pioneer had to be about people, so not just looking at environment for environment's sake, but looking at how the environment um, can actually support people. Um, and that's the key thing really in terms of the Urban Pioneer. And through this engagement, we've also set up an Urban Pioneer Delivery Group, which is made up of a number of representatives from the public, private and third sectors, um, and actually representative of some of the, the key projects that are going on and how we can collaborate and actually kind of join up those projects to achieve, achieve a greater good. And that Urban Pioneer Delivery Group is directly feeding into the Natural Capital Group, the Local Nature Partnership for Greater Manchester, and ultimately back to the um, combined authority in terms of decision making. So, what will the Urban Pioneer do? Well, effectively, through um, the engagement that we've had, um, the overall aim is creating a natural livable city region. And I think, you know, presentations and seminars that we've already had today um, have reiterated this. And obviously, in terms of that, you know, development and investments and urban regeneration are key to this in creating attractive, healthy places where people want to live, work, and bring up a family. And therefore, the Urban Pioneer will actually work with local government, NGOs, public, private sector communities, um, and give them the tools and evidence that they require to appropriately identify and account for the truer value of Greater Manchester's natural capital. And to support this, the Urban Pioneer has got four key objectives and one cross-cutting objective. So the first is developing and testing a communications and engagement model. And that's around creating and using online digital tools to engage with residents so that they can understand and access the natural environment in their local communities. So examples of this are Manchester Metropolitan University's uh, My Backyard study, which actually was engaging with local residents in terms of um, what they've got in their back gardens and actually what it means to them in terms of you know, what role those kind of different functions of those gardens play. But also Lancashire Wildlife Trust's My Wild City initiative, which is engaging with a number of different sectors, whether that's schools, um, offices, um, public areas in terms of actually what is actually on your doorstep in terms of um, wild um, initiatives um, and your nature on your doorstep. But also we're going to be trialling DEFRA's local action project and its bounty tool that's been developed, which is looking at linking and actually engaging public and communities in ecosystem services and the actual role that they play in terms of valuing them in terms of our natural capital. So there's some quite interactive um, projects going on. Um, second one, develop a demonstrator project that shows the benefit of natural capital approach. That's about actually identifying a previously unfunded or existing or new project or initiative uh, and working with that in terms of developing successful innovative funding or investment models. So an example of that is um, how do we kind of deliver um, um, deliver a thousand um, trees in our, in our city centre um, and you'll see from the um, site visits tomorrow in terms of the progress that's been made in terms of tree planting in the city centre. Um, the third one is about demonstrating a place-based approach and that's about ensuring that policy and decision making is better informed to account for the value of our natural environment and the benefits to people's health, well-being, prosperity and growth. So we've obviously been engaging with a number of authorities um, across the country in terms of actually how they're taking forward um, a natural capital approach um, and actually benchmarking with them 
um, their policies and their evidence, um, but also actually kind of looking at how they deliver that in practice, so the mechanisms for delivery. And then finally, in terms of the key one, um, creating a natural capital investment plan. Um, that's about looking at future investment and resources targeted towards supporting the urban pioneers' objectives, um, and particularly in terms of ensuring that the urban pioneers' work is evidence-based, um, so that's collaborative nature and joined up. So there's a lot of work that's been going on in terms of um, um, consultants. FTEC have recently concluded their baseline um, assessment for us and created an initial set of natural capital accounts. Um, and they've also completed a first step in terms of actually looking at existing spend and allocation across the city region. So coming on to natural course. Um, natural course is an EU life integrated project which aims to deliver integrated manage water management through accelerated delivery through the objectives of the EU Framework Directive. So that's namely about improved water quality, um, but also improved flood, improved flood risk management, biodiversity and habitat value from our water courses. And the primary objective of Natural Course is to identify and understand innovative and cost-effective solutions to a wide range of water management issues and where possible, use a natural capital approach to help deliver multiple objectives. So the project's being delivered by a partnership of the Environment Agency, United Utilities, Greater Manchester Combined Authority, the Rivers Trust and Natural England. And it started in 2015, running for 10 years um, and split into four equal phases with a planned budget of 20 million euros with a 12 million euro contribution from the EU. So Natural Course covers the Northwest England um, River Basin District um, and the early focus of that is on the Irwell catchment um, in particular. And the reason we're doing that is because the Irwell catchment reflects a significant number of challenges that you'd find in an urban environment in terms of its river, um, rivers. And if you can actually address some of those issues in the Irwell, then you can replicate those elsewhere. So we're talking about water courses where the majority of those are heavily modified and have poor or moderate ecological status, poor water quality, but also significant properties at risk of flooding. So there's a, track, a strong track record of collaboration and partnership working in the river catchment in the Irwell and more widely across Greater Manchester, which is an ideal comp context for the collaborative approach of natural course. So just coming back in terms of that infographic, in terms of what we're doing, um, progress to date really, um, this is a snapshot of what's being um, delivered. So we've got three urban forestry demonstration projects, 800 metres of the River Kent lowered to improve habitat, 40 kilometres of urban river surveyed for wildlife through citizen science uh, and also 12,000 trees planted. And in particular in, in the river, in the um, Irwell catchment in Greater Manchester, a key focus has been around building our understanding of um, the River Irwell catchment and engaging with stakeholders with this information. So the emerging evidence base reflects three key aims of an integrated water management approach. The first is water quality. So we've got the evidence and measures study for the Irwell catchment. We've got the green infrastructure for water mapping. We've got pollution from towns and cities investigations. We've got water quantity, so that's about natural flood risk management, which is led by the Rivers Trust, and biodiversity, which is the catchment ecology project led by the Greater Manchester Ecology Unit. So in terms of this evidence base, we'll then use that to help actually identify a series of river re renaturalisation projects that can help deliver a range of benefits and ecosystem services. So effectively, if you can identify the benefits and then identify from the, our ecosystem services, identify the beneficiaries, then ultimately you can look at where there are actual potential opportunities for funding in terms of those beneficiaries. So it opens up a whole new landscape really in terms of actually pooling resources and working in partnership, pooling those resources enables schemes to go ahead that are perhaps not affordable on their own. So an example of that is this urban forestry demonstration project um, led, by, led by City of Trees, which is delivering a programme of demonstration projects across Greater Manchester. And this shows how green infrastructure interventions can be used to improve water quality, but also minimise flood risk and improve biodiversity. So the sites located between the M60 and the M62 interchange at Worsley Brook, where there are two small tributaries transporting pollutants from the motorway network and a closed landfill site. The project has involved renaturalisation of the channel to the southern tributary and the creation of a wet woodland on the site of a formal council tree nursery. And allowing the stream to take a more natural course through the woodland will help slow the flow and allow pollutants to break down naturally before entering the main water course. And other benefits, okay, I'm nearly there, include habitat, um, improved habitat for invertebrates, mammals and birds. So lastly, 
In terms of where we grow and develop within Greater Manchester and how we design its supporting infrastructure, including consideration of our natural capital is critical to living our longer term vision as a world leading greener, cleaner city region. And uh, I think as I've mentioned earlier, it's vitally important that we have the right evidence and the information in the right language. And natural capital can mean a lot of things to a lot of audiences, different audiences, but essentially it's about understanding the hidden value. And so I want to just conclude really in terms of summing up that there's a couple of quotes that I regularly use to put this into context. Um, and two of those are, we use nature because it's valued, we lose it because it's free. Nature is priceless, let's value it. Thank you.